10.4 half-lives. So first I'm going to talk about some important facts that you have to know about half-lives, and then we'll take a look at some half-life problems. So radioactive substances decay at a constant rate that is not dependent on any other factors, all right? So temperature, pressure, concentration, none of that matters. Now, it's impossible to predict when a single, when a particular unstable nucleus will decay because it's a random process. The only thing that can be determined is the number of unstable nuclei that will decay in a given time. So like in a given time, you can say, all right, out of these, you know, thousand unstable nuclei, 500 will decay, but there's no way to predict when any single one will decay at no matter what. So half-life, here's definition, is the time it takes for half of the mass to decay. Okay, and that's a very important concept in nuclear chemistry. And that half-life varies per substance. A couple other important facts about half-lives. Elements with short half-lives are useful in medical procedures. So anytime they have to put anything radioactive into you, you want an element with a short half-life. This way it'll decay and be gone from your system fairly quickly. Elements with very long half-lives are useful in dating of non-living substances. So like if you find a rock and you want to test how old it is, you can use elements with very long half-lives. You test how much of it is left, you do a little math with its half-life, and that can give you an idea of how old that rock is. Carbon-14 is used in radioactive dating of one's living tissue, right? Since all living tissue has carbon in it, and a certain amount of carbon is carbon-14. We learned this way back when we learned about isotopes. You can figure out how much carbon-14 is left and use half-lives to figure out how much carbon-14 was originally in the sample, and you can figure out how old that sample is. All right, so all your half-lives are here on table N. So, so far, we've really only talked about the decay mode, but we can see half life. So, like gold 198 has a half life of 2.69 days. So, that means if you have 1,000 grams of gold 198, in 2.69 days, all that's going to be left is half of that 5,000 grams. In another 2.69 days, all that's left is going to be half of that, 250 grams. So the half-life is the amount of time it takes for half of the sample to decay. Now, the shorter the half-life of an isotope, the less stable it is. So we look here, right, francium-220, 27.5 seconds, half of it's gone. So it's a very unstable uh, potassium 37, 1.23 seconds, very short half-life. So these are better for medical procedures. The longer the half-life of an isotope, the more stable it is, right? Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years. Plutonium-239, even more stable, right? 2.44 times 10 to the fourth years. That's uh, 24,400 years, fairly stable. And so it's better for determining the age of fossils, etc. Okay, like a, to reiterate, half-life is the time it takes for half of the matter in a radioactive sample to decay. And it's kind of like a geometric progression here, where in every half-life, the amount remaining decreases by half of the one before it. So let's do a couple of half-life problems. CR-51 has a half-life of 28 days. What fraction of a sample of CR-51 will remain after 168 days? Okay, so if we first look and say we're starting off with a full sample, 100%. Okay, and after 28 days, right, one half-life in 28 days. So after 28 days, we're down to 50% of the original sample remaining. After another 28 days, that's our second half-life, we're down to 25% of the 
of the original sample remaining. So that's the total of 56. After our third half-life, another 28 days, we're down to 12.5% of the original sample remaining. After another 28 days, that's our fourth half-life, we're down to 6.25% of the original sample remaining. All right, you see here, right, we have the whole 50% is a half, 25% is a quarter, 12.5% is an eighth, 6.25% is a sixteenth. After another half-life, another 28 days, we're down to 1 32nd of the original sample remaining. 3.125% of the original sample remaining. Well, after our final half-life 6, another 28 days, we add all these up, it's a total of 168 days, we're down to 1 64th of our original sample remaining. All right, what's that going to be? 1 point six something something percent of the original sample remaining okay when you do a half life problem you can take the time to draw it all out like that or there's a little shortcut so we're saying the half life of CR51 is 28 days and we're trying to figure out how how much will remain after 168 days well if we divide 168 by 28, that's going to be equal to 6. So that means a chromium 51 is going to go through 6 half lives. So here's where we start, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 half lives, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That means we're going to have, if we started here, we have half, quarter, eighth. 16th, 32nd, 164th of the original sample. If a sample of CR51 has an original mass of 52 grams, what mass will remain after 112 days? So if we're starting off with 52 grams, okay, we want to figure out how much is going to be left after 112 days. Well, first we have to figure out how many half-lives on 112. So, so we take 112 days, 112 divided by 28 is equal to 4. So it's going to go through 4 half-lives. So 52 is going to go through 1, 2, 3, 4 half-lives. So 52 divided by 2 is 26. 26 divided by 2 is 13. 13 divided by 2 is 6.5. 6.5 divided by 2 is 3.25 grams will be left. All right, last example. Here we got to go backwards. How much was present originally in a sample of CR51 if 0.75 milligrams remains after 196 days? Okay, so now we're going to go backwards. So we're ending up with 0 0.75 milligrams. We have to figure out 196. How many half-lives in 196 days? Well, 196 over 28 is going to be equal to 7. So we're going through 7 half-lives. Now we're going backwards. So I'm going to draw it backwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that means we're gonna have to, since we're going backwards, double this seven times. So 0.75 times two is 1.5 milligrams. 1.5 times two is three milligrams. Times two is six. Times two is 12. Times two is 24. Times two is 48 times 2 is 96. So if there's 0.75 milligrams in it now, how much CR51 would have been present 196 days ago? 96 
milligrams. All right, question time. I'm not giving you crazy math questions except for this last one. Remember, you have to look up the half-life on the reference table and figure out how much is going to remain after 21 years. The other two don't have any math for you. All right, see you guys in school.